Hello and welcome to Race to Your Career, the podcast series brought to you by the British Horse Racing Authority's Careers and Racing Team. My name's Noor and I'll be your host as we dive into the world of horse racing. Now, if you've ever wondered what it takes to get a race course ready for racing and how the grounds always look so good, then you're in luck. Because today I'll be talking to members of the ground staff team all about their careers in horse racing. Uh, in an ideal world, money and objects, I'd just be at the races every day of the week, just sat there in the stands, enjoying myself, watching all the horses, seeing them in the parade ring. It's a rumba lawnmower. He's actually been nicknamed Fred. What would you say the worst parts of your role are? The weather can be such a challenge. <laughs> and they even gave him a bicycle, so really <laughs> he could get to work every day. <laughs> Right, so I'm joined by Alan and Andrew, who work here at the Jockey Club. Um, would you mind both introducing yourselves? We can start with you, Alan. Um, yeah, so I'm Alan Hathley. I am the Estates Manager here at Newmarket. Uh, I've been here for just gone 20 years. Uh, and I'm Andrew Morris. I'm Head of Racing um, for Newmarket, and I'm pretty new in the position. I've only been here five months. Well, you said that you've been in the industry for quite some time. So how did you actually get started in your career? Oh, good question. So... Um... I grew up in Cheltenham, obviously the home of national hunt racing. So um, was a passionate kind of jump racing fan when I grew up and, you know, sort of been around horses when I grew up. Went to university, did a degree in history, which was um, interesting. Didn't have a clue what, what I wanted to do afterwards. Um, saw a placement for the, the BHA, uh, BHB at that point, graduate summer sort of placement scheme, which I, which I applied for, got a place. It was, it was a tremendous time, two months, and I was placed at a race course in um, Surrey at Sandown. Got to the end of two months and still didn't know what to do. Got the opportunity to stay and have just never left. And you've been in your role for over 20 years. So how did you get started, Alan? Um, so I, I, took a, I took a very different journey <laughs> to Andrew. Um, I, like, like a lot of little boys, I wanted to play football, thought that I was going to play football. Um, didn't. So, um, so I fell out of school at uh, 16 um, and then yeah, found saw a job advertised as a greenkeeper. Thought it's outside, it's sport. Um, so um, so I applied for that, got that job, and then went to college. Um, it wasn't quite an apprenticeship, but I went to college one day a week for uh, for the following five six years. Um, and then thought, do you know what? I want? I'd like to get into racing. I, I like I like horse racing. I've been coming racing here with my parents and my grandparents since I was three years old. Found a job um, at God's Polo Club down in Windsor Great Park. Went there, thought that's horses. That's halfway there, so <laughs> went went there. Close then enough. yeah, it's close <laughs> enough. Um, then went to Windsor Racecourse. I was there for two years, and then and then a job came up up here, and I uh, thought, yeah, why not? Never looked back. Never looked back. Never. No, so I came I came here as a groundsman. Twelve months later, I was made um, I was made assistant head groundsman, and then eighteen months after that, um, I was made a stakes manager. And yeah, you've been here ever since. Been here ever since. So, what is it like working at a race course? It's it's hard work, um, but it's very rewarding. It, it really is rewarding. It's what what you get at the end of it um, on a race day. At the end, of, we're we're working towards a final product, um, being that that race day, and whether it's a whether it's a Tuesday afternoon or whether it's the Saturday of the 2000 Guinness, um, that's what all of our efforts goes in towards to know that people are paying to come to the venue that you've, that you've pr- produced and the site that you've presented the best you can. Um, and they're enjoying the day out. You hear, you hear nice compliments and, and you know that that is being broadcast all over the world. You've got the world's best horses performing. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's very, reward- it's very rewarding. And, yeah, you feel you feel like the the, the hard work is is worth it. Yeah. I can imagine. What about you, Andrew? From your side of things, I think the hardest thing to explain to people is you only see a horse on race days. People have this illusion, I think, that on a race course you're you're constantly around horses. There's horses here constantly. You have to be used to handling them, caring for them. And actually, we have 37 fixtures here this year, um, and that's the only time that we'll see a, a horse here. So the days in between, as Alan said. Uh, for me, the great satisfaction is we're preparing for something. We're always building up for something. And for us, there's huge satisfaction in preparing the track, the racing surface, the other facilities to welcome the stars of our sport. And that's really our job, I think. Our job is to prepare the facilities to allow the stars of our sport, the superstars, to perform. And um, 
we do that in a way that you know we're incredibly proud of um and i think that's what gives us the biggest satisfaction i would say mm. yeah you know there's a moment probably on the morning of a race day for me anyway when you look around and you look at the way the facility has been presented the way the lawns the flowers and you just think you know you've been part of the team that's that's built up towards that and now you're going to welcome 5 10 15 20 thousand people to enjoy the day and i think that for me that's that's the huge amount of pleasure i get yeah so it's like you're setting up the stage for all this time and then you kind of get to see it play out yeah. and yeah the only uh, the, the best way i can describe it and it's probably not a great thing is you know if you were in a if you were in a theatre and you were building a stage or you were building a set or something, they do a huge amount of work to build the theatre and the set and the staging. And then the actors and the actresses go and perform. And that's similar to what we do. We set up the, we set up the facilities to allow those, those horses and jockeys to go and perform. Yeah, it's a huge responsibility. Um, but, I mean, just looking out at the track, it's, it's clear that you spend quite a lot of time doing what you do. There's a lot of prep that goes in. There's a lot of thought, a lot of science um, so what does preparing for a race meeting actually look like? Um, so, so yeah, so the, the preparation starts um, starts well in advance of a race day um, with, with various things, whether that's rail movements, um, the weather, going descriptions um, and irrigation. Um, but, yeah, but what, one thing that I was told men, on many occasions um, by Andrew's predecessor was uh, prepare to fail, fail to prepare. Um, and it and it is true, and it is true. Um, with regards to the actual preparation, I would li- liaise with Andrew, um, and that revolves around irrigation, rail movements, um, mowing. Um, but then the actual preparation for a race day, we would ensure that that every obviously everything is cut, all, all lawns are mown, every other bit of grass is cut, hedges are all trimmed. Um, try to make sure there's no weeds anywhere on site. Um, and then the general site presentation of, of blowing through, cleaning, and then, yeah, mow, mowing of the track. Uh, and just to make sure that the place looks actually at its best or the best that we can do. I pick a job. And what about you, Andrew? So I guess really the, the preparation for me would start with um, the year before we would work with the BHA to um, gain our fixture list for the year ahead. So the race dates that we're going to race on, when we're going to race. And then from there, it's we actually would set the type of races that we're going to run and the prize money that's that we put towards each race. So the race planning side of it, so that can be published to allow owners and trainers to know what type of races we're running so they can target their horses at where they want to run. Past that point, for me then, it's key really, I, I see my job as to enable Alan and his team to do their role. So I'm there to support and to help and we would discuss the key decisions that need to be made around a race day. So... And has talked about um, how when we mow the track, any rail movements that we have, um, any chemical sprays or fertilizer sprays um, and watering and irrigation, which is a big thing, which is obviously related back to the weather forecast. So my role really is to help support his team. Um, he's been here 20 years. He's hugely skilled at what he does with a great reputation. Don't get a big head listening to this, by the way. Um, but my, so my, I really see my job as enabling and empowering him to allow him and his team to, to prepare the site as they continue to. So, and I'm there to support any problems, any questions, any issues that we need to discuss, any ways that I can help. A lot of teamwork then goes behind this. Yeah, it's, yeah I mean, Alan has a, um, quite a large team that works for him, 13. 13 in total. 13 in total. So, you know, I think one thing that... that people don't realize is actually that the, the management and the coaching um around you know that's that's a really big big team um and to keep those people motivated um happy excited for the season ahead and to keep improving standards that's you know takes up a huge amount of your your, your day i would say my day and my and my brain space yeah so what does a typical day involve for you then in addition to managing your team um to start with uh the, f- the first thing that i do um, generally, probably before I've even got myself out of bed, um, is look at the weather, um, to look at the weather station to see how much rain we have had, what the temperatures have been, what they're going to be. Um, yeah, the weather, weather is the first, my first port of call. Um, and then I would, um, and then once once I'm in, I will then meet up with the team. We would discuss um, the jobs for the day, what needs to be done. Um, what what has been done the previous day? Um, checking and answering emails, 
ordering any any supplies, whether that's fertilizers, chemicals, um, grass seed, soil, um, or any machinery repairs that need to be done, um, and then probably and then get on with some some hands on work, um, whatever that may be, whether that's whether that's irrigation, whether that's mowing, whether that's spraying, um, and then checking in with the team again but later on in the day to see how they're getting on. Um, check the weather again. Check the weather probably about five times during the day, um, and then and then basically start pre- and then prepare for the following day um, work schedules. Um, yeah, to to try and land running the following day. And Andrew, you mentioned that you are in charge of picking the different types of races and things like that. Is that in addition to what your normal day looks like? Yeah, so I would incorporate that into my day. So I would be sort of more office based. Than Adam would be, but um, I kind of have this thing where I hate sitting down, so I constantly have to get up and walk around. So I tend to pop up at probably the most inconvenient places. To I love coming down, walking around, and seeing seeing what the team's up to, looking at areas that I think we can improve upon. At the moment, being so new to my role, I'm asking so many questions, just constantly walking around, asking why are we doing this, what's this about, how can we do that better, how can we do it differently. So yeah, I'm sort of office based, but I'm constantly out and about as well. Just just to help lend my my support and assistance to Alan and the team where I can, but also just to improve my own knowledge and skill set. You just appear. I do, yeah. <laughs> just Materialise. Yeah, I do. Puff, with a puff of smoke, yeah, you I just, just turn appear. around and he's there. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm assuming then that the weather doesn't affect your role, but you, Alan, mentioned quite a few times about the weather. So how does it affect your role? Um, <laughs> the, the weather is, is basically the driving force between for everything that we do, um, and that's and that is as much Andrew as myself. Um, the weather, yeah, it's 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 probably it's really hard to probably comprehend how much of an impact the weather has. Where even if that's the forecast and it's wrong, or or the current weather, and that can be from from two weeks prior to a race meeting, um, because if it's if you're talking about if you were talking about irrigation of the of the track and the going, um, obviously the going is is key to a race day. If you're forecasted it's going to be dry and warm for the next two weeks, then you want to be starting irrigating well in advance. Alternatively, if they're talking to, if it's going to be wet for the next two weeks, then that gives you the more headaches um, surrounding whether that's the application of of a fertilizer or the or the cut or the mowing of grass. Um, and just and general site presentation. If if the place is if everything is dry, then you get a far better presentation at the end of it than you do if it's wet. Um, and generally, we wouldn't cut grass if it's wet um, because it makes a mess, and then it just becomes more labour intensive to to clean that up and uh, and try and get it where you'd like it. So yeah, so it is it is pivotal to to everything we do. Um, and there there are many days where I wish that I was that person that woke up in the morning. And all I was worried about was whether I get wet walking to my car <laughs> and then walk into where I work. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, is, it is the biggest factor in, mm. in everything that we do, to be honest. And it's the one thing we can't control. No, no. And it's, it's, the hardest. it's very unpredictable in this country as well. Yeah, so. <laughs> I think, I think that, that's the hardest thing is that um, you're making decisions based on a forecast. And we all know that the forecasters do the best possible job they, can, they possibly can, but... It is not accurate. Generally, no, and it's yes, yeah, subject to change. And you can and you can speak to a meteorologist in the morning, and and they can and they will be honest and say we're not sure or we're not certain, um, which doesn't help. No, <laughs> no, you can't. You can't predict. It's, it's it's quite sad, but we have a contract with a a weather company who provide us with a weather forecast twice a day, and the email pings in the inbox at. 6.21 yeah. in the morning and it's probably the first thing that we both do is read that email yeah yeah. it's a very precise time so well I know that yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why you remember it that's why I remember so it precise. it is so precise yeah. yeah and I know that some you've mentioned a couple of things but what would you say is the most difficult part of your role for me it would be an injury to a participant whether that would be a horse um, or a rider you know the, the safety of the participants is our number one thing. It's, it's what we, we strive to improve constantly. Um, we're really proud of the industry, I think, which has done huge amounts to improve welfare generally. Uh, sadly, injuries do happen, um, and that would be the, the hardest um, 
a thing that I would personally have to deal with. Yeah, it's not it's not nice. Um it's not nice. It's it's part of it's part of the job and it's part of the, the industry we're in, but it's not it's not nice. Um for me, no, I'm sticking with weather. <laughs> weather. Um, yeah. Weather is the worst There's, part. It is, it's the biggest bane of my life. Um and it and it does, it takes over your life. Um it li- it literally does take over your life. And and even if I'm not at work, I'm still looking at the weather. Um is it gonna rain? When's it gonna rain? How long is it gonna rain for? Um and then on the flip side to that, it's you then have the rest of the year when it's when on earth is it gonna rain? Please just rain. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's def- definitely the weather for me is the is the worst part of <laughs> worst part of the job. Yeah, I'm still thinking about that six twenty one. I feel like that's if, if that's how you start you your day. That. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I've taken that with <laughs> Um So you've both been here. Well, you've both been in the industry for very long. Right. Do you both think that you'll stay here um, for a long time, or do you see yourselves going anywhere else? Will I be? I have um, I have no plans on going anywhere. Um, when I started here 20 years ago, not in a million years did I think that I would still be here 20 years later. Um, it, it's, it's a great place to, it's a great place to work. I mean, you can look outside, um, and it's just, you are, you are in touch with nature and it's just, um, they're just, that they're, they're uninterrupted views and it's just, it's so, it's so picturesque. There's so much history involved with this place. Um, like I say, I have, I have no, no thoughts on going anywhere, but at the same time, there are other jobs out there. Um, there are other race courses out there. Um, and, and the good thing, the good thing is that there are race courses all over the world. I believe personally, I believe that I am, I'm at the best race course in, in the country. I, I love Newmarket. I love, I love the place and, and I see it as my own and I take so much pride in, in what I do. Would I get that at another race course in the country? Probably not. It'd probably be no different to somebody playing for Man United and then leaving and going to play for Man City. Um, yeah, I'd probably feel guilty for doing it. Um, yeah, maybe maybe one day there may be something else, somewhere else in the world. Right, so Andrew, can you tell me what the weather's like today? Oh, it's beautiful and sunny, isn't it? It's always beautiful <laughs> and sunny in Newmarket in the UK. Yeah. Um, it feels like spring for the first time in a long time. The sun's out, it feels a little bit warmer. Everything's starting to grow. The trees are coming into bud. The flowers are coming out. It's a um, really exciting time of year. Yeah. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about sort of where we are at the moment? Yeah, so we're on what we call the horse walk. So this is the area that takes the horses from the parade ring where they parade before the race and then they go up this horse walk and out onto the track where they do the race. Mm-hmm. And then after the race, they come back down the horse walk. The horses that the winner and the horses that are in the first four go into the winner's enclosure, which is in the parade ring. And the other horses, the unplaced ones, will go into the saddling boxes, the unsaddling area you can see behind me. Okay. Um, I noticed there's a bit of a, a like electric lawnmower. Is that something that you use all the time or just on the side over there? I've just kind of noticed it's like a Roomba. Yeah, that's something that we're just um, experimenting <laughs> with at the moment. So that's some robot technology. So that's a GPS controlled um, robot mower. Oh, so, um, that's really cool. It cuts all the areas that you can see at the moment. It's something that we're trialling to... Um, reduce both our environmental impact in terms of diesel or petrol um, and also our labour as well to try and um, free up the, the team to be able to complete other tasks. So it's just something we've been trying this winter, but um, a little bit scary. It goes to the kind of future of AI, doesn't it? But know, it's, it's something just... that um, we found really beneficial so far. Right, yeah, no, I just spotted it out of the corner of my eye. I was like, it's a rumba lawnmower. Yeah, Amazing. that's... Um, he's actually been nicknamed Fred. Oh, it's Fred, I'm okay. Slightly off the staff, so, yeah. Love that. All right, well, thank you so much for this. Uh, it's been great to get chatting with you. No problem, we've loved having you here. Thanks. So, Alan, where are we? Uh, so, at the moment, so we're on the Roly Mile. Um, we're just coming up to the winning line here. Um, the Roly Mile itself is, uh, is a mile and a quarter in a straight line, um, mm. 10 furlongs. And then it bears around to your left, and it goes another another mile and a quarter um, out towards uh, out towards Cambridge. To be honest, it's a lot of ground to cover. Um, so, how do you maintain all of it? Um, so, in total, with the Rolling Mile and the July course um, and the Beacon course, we have uh, we have twenty eight hectares of racing surface, um, which is predominantly mown with um, with a roller a rear mounted roller mower um, on the tractor. Um, okay. which, yeah, I mean, the Rodeo Mile takes 
three, three and a half hours to, to mow. Um, July course a bit less, the July course is, is a mile, um, is a mile straight. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's the mowing regime. Um, and then outside of that, say, is, is irrigation, um, mm -hmm. rolling, uh, which we do very, very rarely um, to try and prevent soil compaction. So um, why, do you roll, why do you roll the soil? To, le to level it out. I okay. mean, the, 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 key th the key thing for horse racing is having, um, is having a level, true, true surface mm -hmm. um, with enough moisture in it, but at the same time is, is level and, and, and compact, but not compact, which is a, yeah, which is a really, uh, a really hard, hard task yeah, to get Yeah, I can right. imagine. Yeah, quite a lot of different moving parts. Um, is there anything else that goes into the maintenance of the soil? So there's aeration. Um, so we would aerate, we would vertidrain the soil, which basically um, creates fissures within the soil, um, allows air to get into the pore spaces. Um, air, air and pore spaces create better root growth um, and better root health. Um, because albeit that what you see on the top is, is the green bit, without good root structure and good root growth, um, you don't get that on the surface. Um, and then outside of that, there's the nutritional program um, of controlled release fertilizers, um, and then any other, any other nutrition that we'd put down, so whether that's seaweed or iron um, for the health of the plant. So a lot of different moving parts then to make sure that all of this is looking pretty and green. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot to it. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for telling me all about it. And if you're interested in content like this, go check out our socials for more. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. If we've sparked your interest and you'd like to know more, we have a whole host of resources for you to dive into. And this isn't the only episode of Race to Your Career. So if you haven't already, make sure to check out the rest. Thanks again and see you in the next one.